Um, if I burst into tears, have trouble getting a sentence out, am less maybe eloquent than I normally am, that is because I am going through one of the situations that we are talking about. Um, hey everybody, it's Jen. Have you ever been through an unbelievably stressful time? I'm not talking about just like normal stress or just like daily living, work is hectic, kids are hectic, all of the things. I'm talking about the big stressors, a death in the family, a divorce, a diagnosis for a child, the things that happen that make the entire world around us feel like it's blowing up, where we have to really drill down, remember who we are, not panic, and get through the days. And that is what I am here to talk about today. The things that I do during these periods of extreme stress, I'm actually in one of those periods right this second. So the things that I'm gonna say to you are the things I'm saying to myself as my own best friend. And yeah, let's get into it. So before we get started, I wanna thank Ritual for partnering with me for today's video. I've been taking Ritual for several weeks now. A multivitamin is a super important part of my own personal self-care. I love Ritual because all of the ingredients are traceable, they are vegan, they are non-GMO, and bonus, they get delivered to my door because when you're going through one of these periods of extreme stress, running out of your vitamins and then making time to go to the one place or having like five or six different supplements that you have to take and keep track of is just not going to happen. Ritual really helps me fill in those gaps, especially nutritionally where maybe I'm not eating as great as I should. And this definitely is helping me right now. If you want to try them, you can get 25% off with the code joyful living. The code will be down in the description box. There will also be a QR code that you can use if you're watching on your TV, you can just do it that way. And um, yeah, I think so many of us, especially over 50 are not getting our nutritional needs met. I love that this can help me with that especially now as I'm going through this period of extreme stress. This one's a great choice too. I've taken a lot of multivitamins over the years and some of them give you that like after burner burp, if you know what I'm talking about. These have like a mint flavor that makes that a lot easier. And let me show you, I already took mine for today, but they're, they're in like an oil base and that's so that that's a better delivery system for some of the nutrients that are in here. And um, yeah, I uh, really enjoy them. So you should try them too. Um, if I burst into tears, have trouble getting a sentence out, am less maybe eloquent than I normally am, that is because I am going through one of the situations that we are talking about. Um, someone that I love very much was recently diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. I'm going to be talking more on this channel about that journey. And so if you're not already subscribed and that's something that you want to talk about, definitely subscribe, give the video a big thumbs up. Um, there's going to be a lot to say, and I'm going to be sharing about it from the messy middle as Glennon Doyle calls it. Sometimes I think we wait until we're through a crisis to talk about it. And I thought, you know what I think is more helpful for people is if we talk about it while we're going through the crisis. So we're gonna talk more about that as time goes on. Um, but I have written down here six things that I need to tell myself about how to get through these extreme crises. Now, if you are just starting, let's say your husband just told you he wants a divorce, the doctor just gave you the scary diagnosis, your child, you just got the call from the police station and your child is now in rehab, that has happened to me. No matter where you are in this journey, um, hopefully this video will help you because I don't feel like we talk about this enough. I think we're really good about talking about the glib like, oh, I'm so stressed out at work or whatever. But these like major life moments, we, we all kind of wanna look away from. Like we, we don't wanna accept that it's happening. And also in America, we really suck at this. We want a crisis to last 10 days to two weeks tops. And then we want everybody to be over it and to have moved on. And I was trying to think through like how many of these big, big crisis situations I've been through in my life. And it's probably at this point, seven or eight. Um, and they're not fun. And they actually have the potential to take you under if you're not careful. So we're gonna talk about what you can do to help yourself, what I can do to help myself, and how we see each other and we're all in this together. This might also help you 
if you're not going through the big, hairy, audacious, horrible thing right now, to better support people that are around you um, because we need your love and support and understanding right now. So the number one thing is don't panic. And I know that sounds ridiculous, um, but what can happen is when, you know how they portray it in film where like the, the tunnel comes in and you can just like hear the doctor's voice or hear your partner's voice or, or hear the police officer or whatever it is and you almost like can't comprehend what they're saying it's very important not to panic in the hours, days, and weeks surrounding that. And here's why. Panic is like a fight or, or flight state. I'm not a medical professional. I've been to a lot of medical professionals. <laughs> so take everything that I'm saying as purely anecdotal. But in a state of panic, we don't make great choices, okay? And we can't hear. And it's really important that we hear what the doctor is saying, that we hear what the police officer is saying, whatever the case may be. And really telling someone not to panic is not terribly helpful because you might go ahead and panic and that's okay too. But try to center yourself, to hear the words, repeat the question, repeat one thing I like to do, especially as we have been walking this journey with our loved one, when we've heard something really big and scary, I'd like to say, let me tell you what I think you just said, both for myself to hear it again and also for my loved one that is walking through this journey so she could hear it again. Try to get things in writing as much as possible. Try to record things if you can. Your um, ability to kind of, um, what's the word I want, comprehend the input is greatly diminished when the words are really, really scary. So don't trust yourself to be able to remember. Just try really hard not to panic, to write things down. Even if you, you're sure you're gonna remember them, um, it really, really will help. So number one, don't panic. Number two, cut out all unnecessary things immediately. So this is not maybe the day that you've gotten the news. This is maybe a week later, once you're kind of starting to come out of the shock of it, now it's time to eliminate everything unnecessary from your schedule. This includes superficial friendships, volunteer things that you signed up for, unnecessary social obligations, um, unnecessary work projects that you don't absolutely have to be part of. Uh, you are going to find yourself kind of operating at 50% because this part of your brain is now taken up by the big, hairy, audacious, horrible thing. So this is gonna apply to everything from like paying bills is going to be harder, um, your own like taking care of your animals, taking care of your own things at home is gonna be harder. Um, I had a friend whose daughter was diagnosed with type one diabetes and in the complete chaos that was her daughter's hospitalization, she, they had just changed, you know how your mortgage will like sell your mortgage to somebody else and they haven't set up their automatic payment yet. So their mortgage was late and that actually put a tick on their credit that followed them for quite a while and they needed um, money to pay for their daughter's medical care. So it's things like that that are like non-negotiables that have to happen, but you have to be discerning and release everything else. Um, and if people, if you either don't want to tell them because it's personal, if they understand, if they don't understand, it really doesn't matter. You are in survival mode. So you can't be a people pleaser. You can't worry about all of those extraneous things. Everything unnecessary has to fall away. And if you overdo this and you eliminate too many things, great. You'll have time to like go get your nails done or something. But just know that you're actual time availability and then your mental energy to do all of the things is going to be greatly diminished. So everything that you do is going to take two to three times longer than it normally does. So eliminate everything unnecessary immediately. Number three, self-care. I'm not talking self-care like massages and vacations. I'm talking self-care like drinking water, <laughs> showering, eating food, those kinds of like uh, what, what's the word that I want? Rudimentary basic things about your eating, drinking, and hygiene that I know, especially if you're not in the crisis right now, you're like, that is ridiculous. No, it is not. 
you will not have the energy to do those things. So you need to, hopefully you have someone in your life, um, a partner, maybe um, you know a sister or somebody, a best friend that can help remind you, are you eating? Are you drinking water? Are you uh, taking your vitamins? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing just to keep like your physical body operating and moving through each hour of each day? It, it, it sounds extreme, I promise you it is not, to the point where I will write in, in a journal what I ate, what I drank, how much sleep did I get. It is essential that you be doing heightened self-care. If you have any other medical issues that need to be attended to, I have, fun story, in the midst of our big crisis, I have a diagnostic breast MRI on Monday that I can't even think about right now that is also taking up brain space, but that has to happen. So kind of drill down into what must happen for your own physical body and take extra, extra good care of yourself. Okay, number four, be careful who and what you let in. Um, some of y'all have friends that are freaking energy vampires. They will drain you. They will even drain you while they're trying to help. So this is the time to just cut those friendships off. You, you don't have time for it. It is detrimental to your health. If they are really your friend, they will stick around. If they're not, release them, let them go. Don't let energy vampires into your sphere right now. You don't have time. The truth is you don't have time ever, but you especially don't have time now. Scott and I were talking about this whole idea of how you have, when you have a conversation with someone, you throw the ball back and forth. And sometimes when you're going through crisis, it feels like you get these text messages that are like somebody throwing the ball and then running out of the room. It's just like thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Hope you're good. Thinking of you. Y'all not helpful. Not helpful. I mean, there's no guarantee that I'm going to answer your, your text anyway, because I'm just have a very limited ability to deal with anything, but certainly don't just send like glib Hallmark card type text messages. The person going through the thing doesn't have time to read them. You don't have time to send them like, like be helpful in a real way or don't do anything. Um, the glib responses are actually super annoying and, and not, not terribly helpful. So yeah, I mean, just for me, you may be different. I, I really get annoyed by the hope you're doing well text messages when I'm going through hell. It just, it just feels superficial and like, I don't know, like you were checking a box of checking in on me so that you could feel good about you, but it didn't really do anything for me. And if you're on the receiving end of that, don't feel like you have to return the text message. You don't have to return the phone call. You don't have to listen to the voicemail. You're, you're released to just do what you have to do to take care of yourself and your loved ones. Okay, there we go. Be careful. Also be careful what you let in when it comes to substances. Um, obviously drugs are always a bad idea. Kids don't do drugs, uh, but also alcohol. Um, even if you were like a casual drinker, this may be a great time to stop drinking. Um, and, and I'm not telling you what to do. That's just for me personally. Alcohol is not my friend in a time of crisis. I much prefer like a strong cup of tea, well sugared, that sort of thing. But um, alcohol will, for me, disrupts my sleep. It, it doesn't do what you want it to do. It actually makes everything worse. Um, I happen to have a few people in my family that are walking this journey with me that are um, that have addiction issues. Let's put it that way. Let me tell you, it is not helping. It is not helping at all because I'll have a text conversation and then realize that the person I'm talking to has been drinking, and so they're not they're not clear headed. They're not making great choices. They're they're creating um, suffering. They're creating suffering for themselves. They're creating suffering for me. And if everyone can be sober, it's it's a lot more helpful. So. There you go. That's what I have to say about that. Um, okay, number five, get professional help. Go to your therapist. Talk to your medical doctor, especially like if you're having trouble sleeping. Maybe you need to go on um, you know, an uh, anti-anxiety or antidepressant for a period of time. Maybe you need a sleep aid for a period of time. Bring in everyone in your sphere that is a professional to advocate on your behalf for this very serious thing that you're going through. Don't like isolate off in another room. Make sure you're reaching out to people that can actually help because you might be surprised. For instance, um, like if you never eat when you're going through things, then maybe for you, it's that you need to, to dial into a professional food delivery situation. 
Maybe if you're having horrific anxiety that's keeping you from being able to sleep, maybe you need to talk to your psychiatrist or to your medical doctor about going on some short-term medication. There are things that can be helpful for you from a regular perspective, from a pharmaceutical perspective, all of the things. Kind of bring in what you can. If you can't even think about what, like sometimes you don't even know what you don't know, Discuss this with a friend that's not in the situation, someone that you trust that's there for you. Ask them for suggestions of professionals that you might be able to surround yourself with. Oftentimes, I think there's more help available than we realize. Um, as I'm going through this, for example, um, I found out that the Alzheimer's Association has an 800 number that is 24 hours a day for families. So if you're trying to navigate something and you just can't quite figure it out, you can call them and they can give you help. So as Mr. Rogers would say, look for the helpers. You may have more helpers than you think you do and surround yourself with people that can help and release the energy vampires, which was up earlier, but yeah, no, seriously, really do that. All right, and number six, I want you to just breathe. I'm saying this to myself. If you are watching this, you are alive, I think. <laughs> so you have a 100% success rate for surviving the impossible things. I know right now, while you're walking through it, while I'm walking through it, it feels like we're not gonna make it. It really does. It feels like the problem is insurmountable. It feels like the hill cannot be traversed. It feels like there is no other side to the conflict and that this will be going on forever. I promise you, it won't. It will all be okay in the end. And if it isn't okay, it isn't the end. I know that's so trite, but it's what I keep saying to myself. Also, my favorite right now is just do the next right Thing because the overwhelm will take you down. It will take you down because there's so many things to do. There are so many people screaming for your attention. You need to remember that even if you gave your entire body, soul, and spirit to this crisis, odds are it's just a thimble in an ocean. You cannot fix the situation on your own. Some things are going to give. Something is going to be resolved. You are going to get through this hard time, and so am I. And we're going to breathe. We're going to take care of ourselves. We're going to eliminate the energy vampires, and we're going to get through this time of extreme stress with our tiaras intact, our good humor, and our bodies healthy and well. Please remember to check the description box to get your vitamins. Thank you again to Ritual. This was perfectly timed for this video. I so appreciate partnering with you. Check the description box. Use Joyful Living for 25% off your first order. Whatever you're doing, I hope you're finding joy. You hang in there. I will hang in there too. And I will see you next week. Bye.